Hello friends, in my previous video, we have learned normal reaction and even about laws of friction. I hope you all remember different types of friction like static friction, kinetic friction and rolling friction. But do you know what makes each type of friction different from each other? It's all about different set of laws for different kinds of friction. In today's video, we are going to deal with the laws of each type of friction, their coefficients and we shall also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of friction. So let's not waste the time and start the video. I welcome you all to Stardom Diploma. First, let us see about the laws of static friction. We all know what is static friction, right? A type of friction in which the body remains stationary is called as static friction. Now, let us look at the laws of this static friction. The first one is, it always acts in opposite direction to that in which the body tends to move. That means, this force acts in opposite direction to the motion of the object. The motion of the object is it one direction then this frictional force is opposing the direction see this law is common for all the kinds of frictional forces static friction kinetic friction and also in rolling friction this law is common the second one it is independent of area of contact whether the area of contact is small or area of contact is large Frictional force will act on that body. And the third law is that the magnitude of the static friction is equal to the applied force. In static friction, the body tends to remain stationary. So to remain stationary, all the forces acting on that body should be balanced. If one force is greater, then the body will move along the direction of the greater force. Right? In this case, when we are applying a force, the magnitude of the frictional force must be equal to the applied force if we want to the body to remain stationary. If the applied force and frictional force are equal, then only the body will remain stationary. Next, it is a self-adjusting force. Static friction is a self-adjusting force. And the last law is the value of static or the limiting friction is directly proportional to the normal reaction. Fs is directly proportional to N. Fs is a static frictional which is directly proportional to the normal reaction. If the static friction increases, the normal reaction will also increase and if it decreases, normal reaction will also decrease. If we remove the proportionality symbol, we get a constant mu s. Here mu s is the coefficient of static friction. If we define coefficient of static friction, it is the ratio of static friction to normal reaction. So mu s, the coefficient of static friction will be equal to Fs by n. That is static friction divided by normal reaction. Friends, don't miss the chance to watch a great content. So better subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. Moving forward, we are having the laws of kinetic friction. Kinetic friction, yes, it is a type of friction which acts on the body which is sliding over another surface. And here we are having its laws. The first one is the common one. It always acts in opposite direction in which the body is moving. Yes, frictional force will always oppose the applied force. We know it. Next, it is independent of area of contact. And the third law is for small velocities, it is independent of velocity. But if velocity of sliding is large, heat may generate causing increase in friction. If the velocity of a body which is sliding is small, then the friction will not depend on it. But in case 
the velocity is large then heat will be generated because of higher velocity friction will also increase and due to increase in friction heat will be produced and the last law is that kinetic friction is directly proportional to normal reaction fk is directly proportional to n if we remove the proportional symbol we get mu k in static friction the constant was mu s and in kinetic friction it is mu k here the mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction it can be defined as the ratio of kinetic friction to normal reaction so mu k will be equal to fk by n that is coefficient of kinetic friction will be equal to kinetic friction by normal reaction friends i hope you are understanding but still if you are having any doubts put your doubts and suggestions in the comment section coming to the last one the laws of rolling friction we already said that rolling friction is a friction that acts when one body is rolling on under the surface yes the common one is that it always acts in opposite direction to which the body is moving right and the next one is it increases with increase in area of contact see as the area of contact increases rolling friction will increase the next one it is inversely proportional to the radius of the rolling body as the radius of the body increases the size of the body also increases right so how much ever the body is big the rolling friction will be lesser see as the radius increases as the size of the rolling body increases rolling friction decreases and vice versa as this increases that one decreases and the last one rolling friction is directly proportional to normal reaction so fr fr is the rolling friction fr is directly proportional to normal reaction if we remove the proportionality symbol we get mu r see we already saw the coefficients of static friction and kinetic friction here for rolling friction the coefficient is mu r so mu r is the coefficient of rolling friction so fr can be written as mu r into n now if we define this coefficient of rolling friction we can define it as the ratio of rolling friction to normal reaction so mu r will be equal to fr by n coefficient of rolling friction equals to rolling friction by normal reaction here we are having the relationship among mu s mu k and mu r for a given pair of surfaces see for a given pair of surfaces what is the static friction kinetic friction and rolling friction see about all these there is comparison there is a relationship between all these three types between their coefficients we are having a relationship and this relationship can be written as mu s is greater than mu k and mu k is greater than mu r this order shows us the relationship between the coefficients of the three types of friction friends please support my channel and do like and share my videos till now we have seen what is friction what are its types laws and also what are the coefficients of all three types of friction now we are going to see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this friction here we are having some advantages let us read it friction helps for safe walking on the floor we can walk we can run we can stand on the floor due to friction it provides grip between our foot and the floor yes the conveyor belt transfers the motion from motor to machine parts the nails can be fixed in the walls due to friction see the screws can be fixed on the board and sand is spread on the wet ground to increase friction to avoid slipping see we are slipping due to less friction so to increase friction to make the perfect balance between the ground and our foot we are spreading sand on the ground this sand provides grip it increases the friction okay and the next a mat stick can be lightened because of friction see it helps holding us things vehicles can move safely on road without sliding see brakes can be applied to move in vehicles due to friction these are some advantages of friction 
Now let us look at the disadvantages of this friction. Friction causes wear and tear of machinery parts. See, as the machinery parts are continuously being used, friction will also be produced. And due to this friction, the machinery usually gets damaged. Heat is produced due to friction. This heat damages the machinery. See, heat production during friction. If we normally rub our hands also, some amount of heat is produced. In machinery parts, this heat is not produced in small amounts. As big machineries are working, there is a production of large amount of heat. This heat causes a very big damage for the machinery. In automobiles also, about 20% of engine power is spread to overcome the frictional force. See, in vehicles also, 20% of the engine power is utilized in decreasing the frictional forces. The rubbing of the machinery is increase the friction and to decrease the friction to cool down that heat 20% of the power is utilized. It reduces the efficiency of machinery. So as the machinery becomes older uh, for a long time it was working the quality the efficiency of that machinery also decreases. The upper surface of an aeroplane is made very smooth to reduce friction otherwise a large amount of heat is developed we call it streamlining aeroplane does not have any edges it is perfectly smooth they are made smooth to decrease the friction to decrease the friction the upper surface of the aeroplane is made smooth otherwise if it was not made smooth a large amount has been produced these are the disadvantages We'll continue with the derivations and problems in the next video. And friends, don't miss to watch the next video because we are going to have a brief and short discussion on the whole chapter. And this was today's video. Hope you all start the topic. If you still have any doubts or have any suggestions, feel free to post it in the comment section below. Please support my channel. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Even press the bell icon to get new updates. Okay friends, see you all in the next video.